Hey, how's it going everybody? It's your boy and this is going to be a very slightly different video, only slightly, because there is some relevance to the usual things I talk about in regards to this topic and I've been increasingly watching some of the more drama channels, shall we say, some of the more mainstream stuff. I've just been keeping an eye on things, I have loads of different genres of YouTube that I like and occasionally I watch commentary YouTube and constantly constantly how many times do i have to see this the beauty community always in some kind of war people always at each other's throats drama everywhere tea being spilt is how they now go about saying oh there's drama tea has had some true tea i'm gonna spill some tea for you my love like seriously it's some really gay shit but you know more on that later. And what strikes a lot of people is, how come it's so toxic? Why is it that in this community, there's so much infighting, so much backstabbing and cancelling? Because I think one of the first major cancellings that people saw was from the beauty community. Now, of course, cancel culture doesn't come from there originally. I think the term cancel culture or cancel this, that or the other think if memory serves, at least the first time I saw it, actually came from the K-pop community, you know, the K-stans. I don't think it comes from Korea. I think it's the more Western fans, those stupid young teenage girls who, like, obviously manufactured and plastic surgery-infused boy bands. I think it was them that initially started it, or at least coined the term cancel. But in the beauty community, they really took to it. And, of course, the highest profile cancelling was... James Charles. And that was a really messed up one because the guy did nothing wrong. In fact, at face value, you should immediately just look at it and go, no way, impossible, load of bollocks. How can you say that he's trying to turn straight men gay? That's impossible. Even he knows that. Gay men who try to, I don't know, have sex with straight men without their consent to try and trick them or whatever, I think they would rather just rape them. They would drug them or try to overpower them with brute strength, right? if they really were as bad as they're trying to say that James Charles is, because they're not going to get them to go gay. That's impossible. I know that got really dark, but that's the impression I get from a gay man trying to turn the, a straight man gay. You, you're not going to be able to. You, the only way you can have sex with him is if it's unconsenting. Because that means if he's trying to turn the guy gay, that means he's technically getting the man's consent to have sex with him. And it turns out the guy that he, I think, may have sexted with or talked to was bi anyway. All this started because of a nearly 40 year old woman who got jealous that James Charles was doing better than her, he was outgrowing her. The student had become the master. I'm um, of course talking about Tati. What kind of name is Tati? Is it Westbrook? I can't remember her name. She's a bitch, as everybody knows. Even PewDiePie doesn't like it. He, he hates her. If PewDiePie hates you, that says a lot about you, I would say. She chose to backstab him. The person she took under her wing, she got jealous that he didn't help her with her own product or something like that. It was some horrible, stupid, catty bullshit that got her to do this to him. Recently she tried to do the same thing to Shane Dawson who for some reason has decided to become part of this community to insert himself into that and even he's done nothing wrong. I mean yeah he's a bit of a weirdo sometimes and he can be overly emotional and maybe he's done some bad things in the past but the things that they're trying to cancel him over it's edgy jokes from 10 years ago that nobody had an issue with back then and obviously he doesn't want to do it anymore he wants to move on but people won't let him move on because it's good to use a against him. But of course he doesn't do himself any favours because he also is playing the game trying to get stuff on people to backstab them in the future. Because when you interact with a community that is as low trust as the beauty community is, of course you're going to do that kind of thing. It's only natural. Now of course that doesn't mean that everybody in the beauty community is doing these things, spilling the tea, and especially when there's views and money involved. Because if you can expose this person, if you can cancel this person, you get the subs, you get the views, you get to serve your customers with your own brand or with somebody else's brand and you make good money i think that's really what it is but another thing is it's a very materialistic community and i think as my friend tara said in her video it's gotten to the point where they've become so materialistic they've become so enamored with buying stuff because what they did they had to constantly buy it with their own money you know it's not just people from different companies sending them free stuff they have to buy this stuff they're constantly buying things they're always short on cash if they're not particularly rich and it just creates this empty hollow existence because their life is just filled with empty consumerism and they have to keep doing that to satisfy a demand and it may not be something that's satisfying their own desires deep down and they know that that's probably another reason why a lot of them end up going a bit mental a bit loopy but another thing is that cancel culture is being made worse because of these people because of people like 
Tati and whoever the other gay guy is, the one who looks weird with the horrible makeup, they make it worse because they embolden it. They use it to their own advantage to gain money and views and also to destroy competition. And that only makes it look like it's something worth using to other people. That is something where a curator has a responsibility to disavow such things, to make sure that people don't do such things because it's just making the phenomenon worse because it's not just political people. It's not just people who say political things that get cancelled. Anybody can get cancelled for literally anything. Technically, when a man is falsely accused of rape, he is being cancelled, isn't he? Because he has his entire life ruined because of one accusation, whether he did it or not. It's either prison or it's no job, you're homeless, you lose friends, maybe even your family. These things can have far-reaching social and psychological consequences. For a lot of these people who get cancelled in the beauty community, I imagine some of them are kind of fairly socially isolated as it is, and the internet is probably their outlet into the world to try and gain friends. And when you're in a community where people have low trust, they're constantly backstabbing each other, and when they are constantly trying to one-up each other and all sorts of stupid stuff being catty and just horrible, how is that good for you psychologically? It's not. And not only that, these tea channels, these drama channels, they feed into it as well. They make it worse because they make content off this. And Tara said that they're kind of trolling it in a sense because they get to decide really the narratives and who becomes famous or, or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I don't think they're necessarily controlling it. They're just reacting. There's a demand there for people to talk about the drama that's going on because it can be so confusing, nauseating and annoying, costing to keep up with these things that they need somebody who can compile all this bullshit and turn it into a product that could be easily understood. And that's what the T-Channels do. That's what Keemstar does. There's nothing wrong with that content per se. I don't think that the T-Channels make it any better, but it is what it is. And you have to imagine what kind of arrested development you must have when you're a 37-year-old woman, 30-odd-year-old man like Shane Dawson. I mean, I understand James Charles being somebody who's barely in his 20s. I think he's only just turned 20, 21. I can understand him maybe getting into drama, though, to be fair. He kind of keeps out of it. That Tati Westbrook one was the only thing he ever got involved in, as far as I'm aware. He is more mature than these so-called mature people. Imagine how immature and arrested you must be to go so low as to backstab somebody like that and to harm somebody who you used to have a almost mother-like duty of care towards. To constantly fan the flames of this petty, childish drama. Like, it's not even drama of the good kind, where it's where somebody has actually done something wrong for the most part. It's just, oh, he did an edgy joke 10 years ago. End his career. Oh, he's making more money than me. End his career. Oh, and end his life and say he's a rapist or whatever. And to be fair, James Charles is probably a bigger man than I am because he actually forgave Tati Westbrook. I wouldn't have forgiven that bitch, even if he paid me a billion dollars. No way. Traitors don't deserve forgiveness, but that's just that's just me, man. I'm vindictive. If these 30 to 40 year olds can't be more mature than a 20 year old, then what hope have we got in the world? And not only that, they're feeding into the ongoing issues in our society in regards to rampant consumerism, rampant cancel culture where people are having their lives ruined for the littlest things, and I can't see them as being good role models for the young audience that they have. You know, these people aren't necessarily serving adults here. They're serving young teenage girls and maybe gay boys as well. They're not good role models for these kids because I think there has to be some kind of duty that you have to follow when you have a very young audience like PewDiePie has done very well, I think, for the most part in trying to be somebody that kids can watch, but they can see that he's a good example to follow. Yeah, he can be a bit edgy sometimes, but he's not trying to ruin people's careers. He's trying to say, look, there's other ways than just being like this horrible person, you know? He just tries to be as good as he can be. These people don't. How is that good for these impressionable kids? I don't usually like to use the think of the children narrative and, you know, oh, they're impressionable. But when I look at some of the people who watch these channels, they are quite young. They're not 16-year-olds or even necessarily 18-year-olds. They're much younger than that. They're like 13 to 14. And they're getting involved in these cancellings and harassing people and trying to end people who they think are doing bad things when they're not. How is this teaching people any good kind of life skill? Like, look, if you want to learn how to do makeup, that's fine. But do that. I just can't see how these people are a net positive for society or for YouTube. Some of them obviously are good. There are good beauty channels out there who keep out of it and are good role models. These big ones, it seems to me like it's less about the makeup and the beauty and the hobby and the skill, more just about the tea. And I don't understand why people like Blair White get involved with such things. Why is she getting involved with these people? I think obviously it's for fame, personally. I hate to say it, but I can't understand why she would reduce herself to their level sometimes. Like, why? Come on, you're much better than that. 
But anyway, I don't know. That's just my unfettered, unscripted thoughts on the matter. I just think it's toxic and a waste of time. And I think these people need to grow up and seriously think about themselves as people, not just their careers. And the way they come across to wider society and their fan base who are very young. So until next time, I'll see you later.